into the theory first so that we get uh, some terms and basic understanding set for what the paper goes over. Uh, we want to make sure that we all have a basic understanding of mixers and quadrature signals. <clears throat> Once we understand that, we'll be able to figure out what I consider to be the hardest line of the title of our paper uh, using quadrature sampling down conversion, which just sounds like a bunch of techno mumbo jumbo if I've ever heard it. In our paper, we use an analogy for uh, talking about mixers and quadrature signals in a way that most people should be able to relate to. If you've ever seen a video where the propeller of a plane starts up, you may have noticed that it appears to spin in one direction, stops for a moment, and starts spinning in the other direction. This phenomenon, and the reason it happens, works well as an analogy for what we're doing. So in our example, uh, let's take a single blade of a propeller as it spins. We're going to do two things with it. We're going to set up a camera to take pictures of the propeller at a rate that we set, and then we're also going to plot a graph of the vertical position of the tip of the propeller as it spins. In this example, we'll spin the propeller at half a rotation per second and take three pictures per second. The line on the graph plots the vertical position, and the small images along it show what the camera saw. So let's look, a lot, let's look at the resulting images. If we flip through our images at the rate we took them, similar to a flipbook, the propeller would appear to spin. From these images, it takes two seconds to complete one rotation, so we would conclude the propeller was spinning at uh, clockwise at half a rotation per second, which it was. <clears throat> there are three interesting cases to consider regarding the rate of the camera. If we took pictures at the same rate the propeller was spinning, the propeller would appear stationary when we flip back through it, reaching the same position uh, at the moment we take the picture each time. If we took them slightly slower, the propeller would get all the way around and then a little bit further before we take the picture. When we flip through, as we can see in the small images here, it would appear to turn clockwise uh, slower than the real rate, here 0.2 rotations per second. And then similarly, if we took pictures slightly faster, the propeller uh, wouldn't quite get all the way around, and flipping through afterwards, we'd see the propeller moving slowly in the opposite direction, as we can see in the, the little images here. Uh, here, counterclockwise, opposite to the real thing, uh, at 0.2 rotations per second. So that's where we get the phenomena from a video of a propeller. The propeller starts spinning slower than the camera, reaches the camera rate, and then exceeds it, and so we'll go through those three stages and we'll see that slow down and stop and reverse. So that brings us to mixers, because a similar thing is happening. Put it simply, an ideal mixer takes two sinusoidal inputs and will output a signal that contains frequencies of the sum of the input frequencies and the difference of the input frequencies. The latter of the two, the smaller one, is the one we're interested in listening to. And this new uh, slower frequency is known as the intermittent frequency. This change from a fast real rate to a slow apparent rate is where our paper gets the down conversion in the title. We're converting a fast radio frequency down to a slow intermittent frequency that our sound card can process. Uh, to connect with our analogy, the propeller rate is equivalent to a radio frequency, and the, local, the camera is a uh, local oscillator, which sets our sampling rate. And from sampling, the radio frequency at that rate will come up with an apparent intermittent frequency. That is the difference of the radio and the local oscillator, RF minus LO. So there's two issues we're gonna run into that we have to overcome, images and harmonics. So for images, an important note regarding them is that if a radio frequency is lower than LO, remember RF minus LO, the resultant frequency will be negative. A negative frequency here can be considered to be identical to the positive counterpart. Uh, at least on its own, we can't tell the difference. So if we pick up uh, two frequencies that are the same distance frequency-wise from our local oscillator, both will appear at the same intermittent frequency after the mixing. So we need to be able to reject the undesired image frequency so that we don't hear two stations at once. With our propeller, we can see this if we take images at 1.2 times per second and then have two propellers one spinning 0.2 slower, one spinning 0.2 faster. After our image taking, we can see that the vertical apparent trace looks exactly the same, and the only way we can tell the difference is because of our camera, where we can see one, uh, the top one is turning at a negative counterclockwise rate, and the bottom turning at a positive clockwise rate. 
Uh, from this, we can conclude that if we want to be able to tell the image and uh, desired frequency apart, we need to track the horizontal position as well as the vertical. That way we'll see that same kind of rotation. So here we get into quadrature signals, which are simply two signals that are out of phase from each other by a quarter of a cycle. If we track both the horizontal and vertical positions, we'll see something like these here, where despite the rotation direction, the vertical position uh, remains the same here, but the horizontal position below is mirrored. Because of this, the stationary vertical graphs are called the in-phase component, and then the bottom two are the quadrature components, uh, because they are a quarter of a cycle out of phase with the in-phase one. So if we put those two on the same graph, uh, that can be seen easily. Uh, on the left, we can tell whether it's a positive or negative frequency based on the order of whether the horizontal and vertical traces reach, uh, which one of them reach their peak first. Uh, with the propellers shown, reaching the upmost and rightmost positions in that order will mean it's clockwise, and the reverse will mean it's counterclockwise. Putting those all on the same graph, all three iterations, uh, on the right here, we can see that a quadrature signal will lag the in-phase for a positive frequency and will lead the in-phase for a negative frequency. Uh, knowing this, the software-defined radio uh, can determine whether it's looking at a positive or negative frequency, the uh, desired or image frequency, and choose whether to play or reject that audio. Okay, now the other big issue is harmonics. Uh, there are an infinite number of harmonics that will create the same traces as the one we're intending to listen to, as can be seen here with one example where 5 and 9 rotations per second when capturing at 4 will get that exact same apparent trace, and quadrature signals aren't going to help with that. Uh, this is actually the part where I'm going to tease you, because the reasons for this and how we uh, must address it are left in the paper.